I think a lot of agency owners really, really struggle with is, is that CX component, is that customer satisfaction component? And where do you sort of double down on that in that evolution of growth? You always need to do good work. And like that's really like people ask, like, why has Hawk been so successful? It's like because frankly, 99% of marketers have no idea what the fuck they're doing. And so it's not hard to, you know, compete with a bunch of charlatans. Like when people come in and work with us, they're like, oh wow, you actually deliver what you say you're going to. Like the fact that that's a novel idea is crazy, but that's a, when I talk to a lot of the new agency owners, a lot of times they don't actually know anything about marketing. There's no barrier to entry to start an agency. They see a Ty Lopez video or some bullshit and uh, they go, oh, I can start one too. And then they see, we talked about this before getting on, but like someone driving a Lamborghini and talking about their agency and it's like, oh, that could be me. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You forgot the key ingredient here. You need to actually know what you're doing in marketing. Like that's, that's important. I know that there's no barrier. It's crazy to me that like you, you need a license to cut hair or actually deliver milk in the U.S., but you don't need a license to manage half a billion dollars in marketing budgets. Like it's absurd to me, but here we are. So um, that has been one of the biggest challenges, and that's where I see a lot of agencies struggle. That's number one. It's like you're churning through clients because you're not doing good work, and you can only keep up so fast. Like you know, at some point you hit. You know, or you can only bring in so much business and you're losing it all the back door and you hit this, you know, sort of equilibrium where you can't grow the business because you're not, you know, your sales can't keep up with your churn. And that's and that is a rough business to run. And that's why you see a lot of burnout in agency owners. You see a lot of plateaus like that's number one. If you're not able to keep your business. Now, that being said, we deal with churn, too, because we also work with small and medium businesses that they by nature are all over the place. And so regardless of how well we're doing, a lot of times small and medium businesses are shifting. So if that's, you know, let's assume you're doing good work and that's, you know, table stakes. The next piece is having that sales funnel to replace that business and to keep growing. And I'd say that, you know, that's an important piece that I know we've really nailed on in terms of like, we've been able to grow a lot because we're able to, you know, we drink our own punch. Turns out we know how to do marketing. So we market ourselves and Mm -hmm. it works. And then the last piece of that, that I think people miss is the margins. Uh, A lot of people don't understand the importance of having, decent margins on your uh, agency so that you can reinvest in marketing sales so that you can invest in the future so that you can invest in growth and hire people and have some bandwidth because a lot of people don't think about that ahead of time and they end up a slave to their own business because they're paying their people way too much. Like we saw it in the great resignation. We refused to pay these stupid rates that we were getting competitors paying because we knew it didn't pencil for the business. We're like, Hey, if I get it. If you're going to make three times as much money in another company, Go hope it, hope it lasts six months and you've got a year and a half of pay. Like, I get it, leave. But we're not going to match that. And I watched, we because again, we have our M&A side. We look at hundreds of agencies' books throughout the year, if not thousands. And there are a lot that ended up giving these raises and promotions and paying people too much. Now they can't run a profitable agency because there's no way that they can charge clients enough to then build that person out enough to actually make any money. And so margins marketing and client retention, I'd say, are the three. Now, client retention, again, servicing them well and communicating them with them well are the two biggest things. Like communication, I think, actually trumps actually doing good marketing. If you're good at communicating and aligning and talking to your clients, you'll keep them long. And we've seen this in the data constantly. If we're good at communicating and talking to our clients, they're going to stay a lot longer regardless of performance. Um, and so that that's key there. And then if you, if you cover those three things, I think you're actually going to be doing all right. Yo, this is maybe the most important thing that's ever been said on perpetual traffic. Hey, so if you're listening to this and you're an agency owner, honestly, if you're a business owner, stop the car, pull over, write this down. Communication is more important than good marketing. I.e. communication is more important than the, the deliverable. And I've seen this too. My biggest fail point in early stage at Google Ads, we were phenomenal. We crushed life. But we spent so much time, you know, we're deep, dark, cave dwelling, nocturnal, over caffeinated engineers that like to work at night. And so we're sitting there really doing the work, but not telling the client we were doing the work. And the client was always pissy with us. And then we got really good at communication and they preferred that to the good work. I could do C minus work and good communication and rather have that than A plus work and B minus communication. Like it's so, so critical. Build that into the fabric and ethos of your business. Well, it's important to understand is human nature. We use logic to justify emotions. If I feel good about you, I'm going to find a reason why I want to keep working with you. If I don't feel good about you, I'm going to find a reason why I shouldn't be working with you. 
And so making sure you, like the communication side plays to that emotion. Why are people hiring you? Because they don't want to manage this. It's a bandwidth or expertise thing. They either need bandwidth because they don't have enough time to manage all their marketing, even if they're an expert, or they need expertise because they're not an expert. So one way or another, you need to satiate that desire to be like, I need help. And so they need to feel like you're that one, that you're better at doing this than they are. You have taken this off their plate and you are the expert and you are helping them save time. And if you don't fulfill that, they're out and they're going to find a reason to be out. Dude, that's another writer downer. Agencies are bandwidth or expertise. That's it. Or actually, we always talk about bandwidth, expertise, or punching back. Some people just want to hire someone to yell at. So <laughs> no Even there. that's a little bit of expertise, though, because it's like, I need you to know how to take a punch. Yeah, touche. That's I just so find funny. that it's like, even if you're not getting the success, it's having the enthusiasm and the ideas to say, all right, well, we tried this, this didn't work, but here's what we're going to do next because mm-hmm. we can, we actually care. And it's like the thing that, that ends up being the, the real linchpin for retention is that these guys just give a shit. Like they, yep, they yeah. actually care yeah. about what it is that I'm doing here. I mean, that's it. it and if you can infuse that in your smaller agency, that's one of the keys to success is, is what I'm hearing. Well, how do you yep. do that, Eric? What what specific systems do you have in place to process size communication? Is there something like that at Hawk or is it just I hire smart people that know how to do this? No, we have a ton of process to it. And we have um, a whole AI system that monitors our client communications and flags uh when we, we flag correlations between when we lose clients and what the communication was like, and so that we can actually say like, oh, if we, wow. like, for example, we thought apologies would be a bad sign. Like if we're saying, I'm sorry in our communication, well, shit, we screwed up. And so we monitored all these apologies that were going out and then we monitored how the clients retained and we found actually apologizing did the opposite. When we oh, take ownership and apologize, clients were like, oh, you actually took ownership and we can trust you because you actually you know, owned it. Like we, we, that, that actually had a positive effect on the relationship, even though we were apologizing because we made a mistake or something happened. The fact that we just apologized actually retained clients better, even though we thought it had the opposite effect, which meant, you know, if so we're apologizing, we did something wrong, we're going to lose a client. It was the opposite. So it's things like that, that we actually monitor using AI now that it allows us to actually see what is causing us to lose clients. 